What is up, family, and welcome back to my year in review slash how I survived Brandon's deployment. If you have not already seen the first installation of the series, go back and watch that video. I will link it up here. So this video is the Tennessee edition of how I survived Brandon's deployment. Now we are in the month of April. Now my mom lives out in Tennessee. She used to live in Missouri. She got remarried and now she lives in Tennessee. And I was kind of hitting my breaking point. I just had a full-on panic attack like sobbing could not hold myself up because I was crying so hard I don't know if you've ever been in that space before if you've ever had something like that it's scary it feels like you're completely out of control and I'm just like I don't know what to do like I don't know what to do like I'm just lost my husband's not here I don't have anybody here like I'm just I need help I love my cat and my dog, but they were just driving me insane. If you don't follow along on Instagram, and if you don't, you totally should join the Instagram family. I talk a lot about Frisco and Cinder. Frisco's my dog, Cinder's my cat. I talk about them a lot on Instagram. Cinder is a tortoiseshell cat, meaning she got that tortitude, meaning she's kind of mean. She's not mean. She's loving and sweet and nice, but homegirl got an attitude, and... She likes to bite and scratch, and Brandon is her favorite person. So when he left, it was a bit rough, and it's like Frisco and Cinder would play this game of, I'm gonna drive mom crazy, and one of them would be super needy, and then they would stop, and then the other one would be super needy, and then they would stop, and they'd like play back and forth. And I was just dealing with a lot, like Brandon was gone, I was sad, I struggle with anxiety and depression anyway. I was just having a really, really hard time and I kind of just hit my breaking point. And my mom and I had talked about me going out to visit her for like a week or two whenever Brandon was gone because I'd never seen her new house. So I called her and I told her I can come for longer if I can bring Frisco and Cinder with me. I can't just leave them here, but I'm about to lose it. I'm going crazy. So my mom, being the wonderful human that she is, let me bring Frisco and Cinder. They even installed a fence in the backyard for Frisco. And from that point on, my life got so much better. My mom got a one-way flight out to Kansas City. I picked her up and she drove with me because my cat Cinder does not do well in the car. And we drove to Tennessee together. And honestly, the moment my mom got here, I instantly felt a billion times better. So. My tip for deployment, if you are at your wit's end and you are losing it, ask for help. Ask for help. This is so important and it is not done nearly enough. Now, I know that not everybody is blessed with family that can help, people that are willing to help, or friends that are willing to help. If you don't have any, go out and make some. And I know that's a lot easier said than done. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I'm actually a really big introvert. I'm actually very shy, but get on the wives page at your base and just put it out there and say I'm looking for friends. Like I had a girl message me on Instagram recently and said, hey, I've been following you for a while. I know this is kind of weird, but I feel like we'd be friends. My husband's gone, I have no friends here whatsoever, and now we're friends. It truly is that simple. Now, not everyone's gonna be super nice about it, and you just have to sift through crappy people and find the good ones, but call in help when you need it. When you are at your breaking point, ask for help. That is my biggest advice, and like I said, I know not everyone is blessed to be able to do what I did. I don't have kids, and I work for myself. I have a business that I've worked really hard at to be able to just kind of pick up and leave if and when I need to. That was kind of a strategic decision that Brandon and I made was that I would stay home and build my own business instead of working for somebody else because of moments like this where I need to get away and I need help, I can just pick up and leave. I'm not tied down here. And then I just had my neighbor came over and checked on my house every now and then. That is how I did this. And like I said, if you are really struggling, I highly recommend that you do this too. So my mom came and we drove out to Tennessee together. I wanna say it's probably like a 10 hour drive i think we stopped in mansfield at my grandmother's house at the halfway point like i said the moment my mom got there and when i got out of the car in tennessee at her new house i just felt instant relief like it was so wonderful and i spent two months at my mom's house and those two months in tennessee were probably like my least stressed out time during the whole deployment again i was visiting my mom and her new town her new house where she lived and so she wanted to take me to all the her new local places today's culinary adventure of camden tennessee we are going to pappy to pappy 
Poppies. Mom says that they have really good cheesesteaks. We have the Philly cheesesteak, which looks amazing. That's my mom's with the fries. We have the chicken Philly with fries. That's amazing. <laughs> so we ate a lot of food in Camden, Tennessee. And let me tell you, these people know how to eat. Like their food was so good. We went to a lot of different restaurants. We tried a lot of different food. My mom is also a big coffee person. So there was a lot of coffee involved. I started working a lot more in her backyard. It was so nice out, the weather was beautiful and I just love being outside. I think that's one of my other big tips is get outside as much as you can because the fresh air just helps. It just helps your mental health so much. So I started doing a lot more work outside. I hit 10,000 views on YouTube, which was a really exciting moment for me. I started doing a new workout program with my mom called Let's Get Up. It is a dance program by Sean T, who's the insanity guy. That one was so much fun. <laughs> And then I went on a national park trip with my friend Emily and her friend Katrina. My mom took me over to Southern Nazarene University. My friend Emily picked me up and we went on an adventure to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. So my friend Emily, I do a lot of traveling with her. You may have seen other videos, the Utah series or the Yellowstone Grand Teton series. This is the Great Smoky Mountain National Park series, not this one, but that will be coming soon. We went to the Biltmore, like the Vanderbilt estate in I think North Carolina, and it was so beautiful and so crazy. Those vlogs will be coming soon, sometime in 2022. And once I got back from that trip, I decided to start 75 Hard. Now, I don't know if you have heard of 75 Hard, um, it's kind of insane. It's a mental toughness challenge and the rules are you have to follow the certain criteria for 75 days straight. If you mess up at all, if you miss a day, if you miss anything at all, you have to start over. And the day that I started 75 hard was 76 days away from my Disney trip and so I couldn't mess up at all. So I decided I need a new challenge. I need a physical challenge. My plan and my goal had been to lose weight while Brandon was gone and I just could not seem to get my butt in gear and I just needed something to focus on that involved my health. And so I started 75 hard. The criteria of 75 hard is you have to drink one gallon of water every single day for 75 days. You have to do a 45 minute workout every single day for 75 days. You have to do another 45 minute workout, but this one has to be outside. Today, I looked at the weather because it looked kind of cloudy out and saw it's gonna start raining in 57 minutes. My outdoor workout's only 45 minutes, so instead of just putting it off and making excuses, I got outside and I got it done. Rain or shine, no matter the weather, every single day for 75 days. It is hot today. It is raining. You have to take a progress picture every single day. Again, every day, 75 days. If you miss taking the picture, you have to start the whole thing over. I literally got out of bed at midnight one night and went and took a picture. You read 10 pages of a personal development book every single day for 75 days. You stick with a diet. I chose to stick with TB Mindset, which is the nutrition program that I already follow. And honestly, it kind of felt like it was cheating, but it really wasn't because the other thing was no cheat meals. There are no cheat meals with To Be Mindset. Like as long as you track it, write it down, go on the scale, drink your water every day, there's no cheat meals because To Be Mindset is about changing your mindset and having a healthy relationship with food. So honestly, I think doing To Be Mindset is kind of what saved me with 75 hard because I would not have actually successfully completed it because of the cheat meal thing. So I started 75 hard and it was intense. I went on a lot of walks in my mom's neighborhood. We went to the like park sometimes. I continued working out with my mom and it was, it was a lot. There were some days where I was literally doing like crunches in the back of the car. I just got back from Nashville. We spent all day in Nashville shopping. It was very fun, but it is now 11, 17 at night and I'm out here with a citronella candle and my computer about to do yoga. My 45 minutes outside, I'm gonna do three different yoga videos. It's gonna be past midnight by the time I get done. I'm gonna finish day 29. I think I'm day, day 29? It might be day 29. But I accomplished it, I finished it, and I made it through 75 hard, and I'm super proud of myself. We went to Paris, Tennessee, and saw that they had a giant Eiffel Tower in their town, which is fun. My mom took me to this cute coffee shop called Sweet Jordans. We went to this delicious Italian place called Musto's. Like, basically, 
My mom just showed me the tourist Tennessee life and it was super fun. We witnessed a car on fire on the side of the road, which is crazy. And I saw my niece and nephew. We went back home to Missouri because we were attending a celebration of life. I got to see my niece and nephew there. And obviously like my brother and sister-in-law, the rest of my family, but the tiny people are just like the most special ones, obviously. And then in May, my mom and I headed back to Tennessee. We were down in Monette for a few days. We went back to Tennessee. I bought my first pair of Birkenstocks, which sounds like not a big deal, but I have wanted these shoes for three years and I could never get myself to buy them. So I finally broke down and bought them and I love them. I wore those shoes pretty much every single day of the summer and the spring and I love them and they're my favorite shoes ever now. We had even more delicious food. Continued on the 75 hard train. My mom and I went shopping a lot. We went sightseeing. We went to Nashville. We went to Memphis. I didn't even know that Fabletics had like actual stores. So I've never been in a Crate and Barrel before, but I love everything they have. It's all so cute. <laughs> I want a love sack. These are awesome. Do you like it? I love it. Here we see a wild mom in her natural habitat looking at yet another coffee maker. How many coffee makers does one need? A lot. I spent a lot of time on my mom's fancy treadmill so that I could get my indoor workout in. And I went and did a church service project with them. And then it was June. And June was the month that I would be leaving Tennessee. But before I left, we did a couple more fun things. We went to the Memphis Zoo and we went to the Tennessee Air Show. Now, both of these were super, super fun, and I had a blast at both. The Memphis Zoo was so fun. Like, the animals were amazing and adorable, and the zoo was, like, really pretty and just laid out really well. And the Tennessee Air Show was awesome. One, I'm kind of into aviation anyway because my husband is a pilot. I was in the Army Reserve for eight years. My husband was in the Marine Corps. Now he's in the Army. He was a crew chief before. So we love the military, and we love good air show. Now, this air show was so cool. It wasn't the Blue Angels. I believe it was the Thunderbirds were there. They put on an incredible show. They had something called a legacy flight with like a World War II aircraft and then like the Thunderbirds, I believe it was, like the more recent ones from the Air Force. And it rained, which was super funny. And when I say rained, I mean it downpoured. So we are at the air show in Smyrna, Tennessee, and I just checked the radar. This may not be the best day for an air show. It's raining. But it was so much fun. And then the next day, sunburn and all, we headed back to Kansas. And I was so sad to be leaving, but I was also renewed, rejuvenated. I was ready to get home and I was ready to start my life back in Kansas. And honestly, just having that couple month break where I went to my mom's and I just didn't have as much responsibility. Like it's honestly, it's just nice to know that it's not just you. I think that's the biggest thing with deployment is it is so hard when it is just you and you know that it's just you. Not even when crazy things are happening, but just just all the pressure that we have. That anything that happens, you have to figure out whether it's something with your kids. For me, it was with my pets, the house, when the furnace breaks, when there's a snake in your house. That's a story for a few months later. <sighs> Ooh, that was a terrible experience. Having giant spiders that you have to kill, having to cook all the meals, like it's just a lot. It's a lot and it just weighs on you. So if you can go and spend time with family, it's so helpful. I don't know that I would recommend going like for the duration of the deployment and staying like in somebody else's house. I've done that before. This was not my first deployment. Um, we had a nine month thing before when Brandon was in the Marine Corps. He did nine months in Honduras and both of those times I went back home and stayed in, in Missouri where I'm from. And I don't, I wouldn't do that anymore. And honestly, I don't necessarily recommend it because it is really hard when you're an adult to go back, like, especially like with your parents, not saying anything bad about my parents, but it's just hard when you are used to having your own home, your own life, your own established way that you do things. And you go back into somebody else's home for nine months. That's just kind of hard. Um, so I don't necessarily recommend like spending the entire deployment somewhere else and going home because I've done that. I, and again, it wasn't bad. But I wouldn't do it again. But at the same time, when I did that before, we were out in New Jersey, super far from family, and I we had no friends whatsoever. So if you have zero support, 
then yeah, that might be the best option for you. But if you have some support, if you have friends, if you're close-ish to family, I think I honestly, I mean like I did now, I would, I would stay where you're at. It's also really helpful and really nice to be able to be going through deployment with other people who get it. Especially if your spouse is active and you're near an active base, that can be really helpful. But yeah, so after my couple months stint in Tennessee, I was ready to go home. I just dropped my mom off at the airport after two wonderful months of staying at my mom's house. It's back to Junction City, Kansas for me. Now that it is super dark, let me get a little bit closer because it's, like I said, it got really dark. This next video, I'm gonna turn the light on. But that is the end of the Tennessee edition of my year in review slash how I survived deployment. The next video is going to be about the summertime. We're going to pick back up in June, but this time we'll be in Kansas. If you want to watch the next video, make sure you like this video if you actually enjoyed it and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, we're back. My friend April came over, so we had to take a quick break. And if the lighting is changing in this video, I'm so sorry. It's getting dark outside, and I'm just using my window right now for lighting, so it's fine. Frisco's literally right here. Want to say hi to the camera? Say hello. She's such a good prayer. She didn't get that from me. You love it? I do love it.